All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College Bowl podcast. Damian and Nick here have been doing our preview and prediction for the Ole Miss Rebels. Lane Kiffin, it's his third season here in Oxford, 15-8 and eight record. They replaced both coordinators, Jeff Levy and DJ Durkin, to part for Green, our past years. Charlie Weiss Jr., who worked with Lane back at FAU the past two seasons at USF, and Maurice Crum, Chris Partridge, they will split defensive coordinator roles. Crum comes over from Western Kentucky a team that made a lot of big plays last year. It wasn't just the offense for Western Kentucky. They forced a lot of turnovers. The defense was also pretty good. The Rebels also landed 17 commitments from the portal. 24-7 Sports has that ranked as the second-best class behind only USC. Loaded with transfers, like I said, eight total here on the offensive side of the ball, starting with Jackson Dart. You know, he struggled with decision-making and ball placement last year at USC, but showcased impressive arm talent and playmaking abilities. You know, he only played a handful of games last year, and he shined in his debut appearance where he was thrusted into action against Washington State when Slovis went down, 400 yards, four touchdowns. He also got injured in the same game, though, but he shined at times in his limited appearances. What are your expectations for Jackson Dart this season? Seems like he has a sky-high ceiling with Lane Kiffin as he replaces Matt Corral. Lane Kiffin is the perfect coach to play in this modern transfer portal era i love what he can do in the portal he, he can recruit guys really well he can talk to them he can get them and get them on board he brings in jackson dart he was linked with a move to oxford all all off season he makes the move there i think the potential is the sky is the limit for jackson dart with lane kiffin he loves his high flying offense he's going to air the ball out a ton this year i think dart has real potential here to step up and be a really strong player in the sec and really make an instant impact he had a decent time at at USC in the limited action, like you said. We didn't see a whole lot of him, but in those flashes, he looked good. I liked what he could do on paper. I think this is a great fit. It's one of the better fits out of the portal this offseason. I'm excited to see what he can do. He, he comes in, takes over for Matt Corral, who got drafted in the NFL draft. I love what Jackson Dark can do, and the sky's the limit for him. Of course, Luke Altmaier, I guess he has to beat him out, and I'm hearing that's a legit competition, which makes sense. Altmaier's been around longer, but I think Dart will eventually emerge as the better playmaker here in the fall before we get things going in September. The running game, they lose their top four rushers from last year. They all had 500-plus yards. That includes Corral. Turned 17 yards per game. You know, Jeff w has gone, so they might slow things down a bit, but the goal is still the same. That's to run the ball with success and go fast. I think they got the He's a slasher. Nice power, lower body strength. He barrels through tackles. Good breakaway speed. And he also has good stamp. Fit in this offense coming over from TCU. You remember a former five-star recruit. A couple years back. They also picked up USC's Bentley, 1,500 yards, 15 touchdowns the last two years as a starter at SMU. Well, I guess he did split time there at SMU, but he was still a big part of their running game. 5'11, 200 pounds. They got some big backs here. They got plenty of speed, power, skill. Um, I don't know if the running game is really going to fall off, but, you know, because replacing four starters is a big deal, especially three running backs who did a lot for them. But I think Evans, he's built for this opportunity. What do you think this running game will do in 2022? It certainly is natural to expect a step back for the, the running game this season when you lose the top four rushers. I think that's a normal expectation. When you bring in guys like Evans and Bentley, there's a lot of upside with these guys. Again, Kiffin attacking the portal, getting guys out of them that are so talented. I think Bentley is the more interesting pick of the two. I think he has real potential to step up and be an absolute star. He had a great season at SMU, like you said, despite splitting time. He still really stood out. Evans, of course, former five-star. You love the talent there. The raw talent is, is absolutely amazing with Zach Evans, but I think Bentley has the real potential to be the star out of these two and be the one that people are talking about at the end of the season. And I'm very interested to see what they do with Jackson Dart's legs. I mean, he did have two rushing touchdowns last year at USC, but for the most part, he really didn't do much with his legs. Of course, two different styles of offense, but is that something he's capable of doing or not? Remains to be seen because Corral, I mean, you can't really replace his leadership. The heart he played with, this guy was not sliding. He was taking hits like crazy. That's how much commitment he had to this football team and this offense. We'll see what happens with Dart. The receiving group, you know, they had three transfers that count three leading pass catchers they lost. You know, all that production they lost, they really replaced it in all positions. I can't believe what Lane Kiffin has done. Everybody wants to play for him. They want to play here in this offense, including Malik Heath, who comes over from the Crosstown rival Mississippi State. 6'3", 220, 34 grabs for 442 yards and five touchdowns on that air raid offense. I think this is a nice little fit because he kind of understands some of the principles of going fast, some of these quicker and shorter routes as well. They also got Jordan Watkins, 5'11", 175 from Louisville. He's got plenty of speed. Louisville, man, they had so many fast players, and a lot of them transferred out. This was the second guy to go to the SEC West. Remember, Alabama picked up Tyler Harrell as well. Uh, you know, he was, he was sparingly on special teams. That was Watkins. So I think they're going to use him in a variety of different ways. My favorite guy, though, Jalen Robinson. Savvy, slippery pass catcher. Nice focus. I love his hands. Averaged nearly 18 yards per catch over the past two seasons at UCF. What are your expectations for these three transfers that figure they'll make a big impact this fall? 
again, Lane Kiffin is just a wizard in the portal. He grabs these three guys, and all three of them have incredible upside. All three of them have special skills that are going to help Ole Miss out. He's coming from Mississippi State. I love what he can do. Comfortable in the air raid offense, like you said. I think he has serious potential to be a big threat play playmaker. I like what he can do. Watkins comes from Louisville. The speed is there. He's a special teams guy. Expect to see him on punt returns. I like to see what he can do there. And then Robinson, the best of the body to work out of those three at UCF. Very talented wide receiver. He was the name that everyone was wondering if they were going to grab. You know, he was linked with them during the offseason. A lot of people were hoping he'd come over. I think he slots in perfectly. I really like to see what he can do. You know, Kiffin's grabbed these three guys to replace his three receivers that departed. I think it was a perfect job for him. I'm very impressed by it. Yeah, they also got Jonathan Ringo back. He was off to a hot start for the through the first three games last year, got hurt. He also played in the final three games. Really wasn't included that much. Had 346 yards on the year. Most of that came in the first three games. So he's obviously a guy they're looking to unleash this year. Dennis Jackson as well. Another 175-pounder that has athleticism and quickness. He's been a good kick returner for them. 12 grabs for 20-plus yards per catch last year. So I love the receiving group they have. No concerns there. Also added Michael Trick from USC, an athletic tight end of plenty of size that you know really likes dart. He was going wherever Jackson was going, so they already have some continuity built together from their time at SC. So I love that what this offense has from a skill position standpoint. But the offensive line really wasn't that good last year. You know, the pace and the skill is more really why the running game thrived, at least in my opinion, more than anything. You know, the pass protection wasn't always great. Corral, of course, tried to do too much at times, but he doesn't deserve all the credit. They do add Mason Brooks from Western Kentucky. He played an air raid fast offense so the condition it are well understood i think he's going to come in and be a leader here and day one looks like they get most of the starters back up front they just need to get better acclimation to this offense and need better performance out of these guys up front i think the two stars are going to be on the right and left tackle i think mason brooks i really like what he can do coming over from western kentucky and nick Brolaker comes back for a season he hit some question marks he was going to return he returns and starting left tackle i think he has serious potential to take a step forward as well but like you say, we need to see something big out of this offensive line if this offense is going to be able to keep up that same sort of pace they were in the past. Looking at the Rebels' defense, you know, it was much improved in DJ Durkin's last what, the next year. Hold on. Was that the second year? Okay. Was it second? Yeah. It was. Looking at the Rebels' defense, it was much improved in DJ Durkin's second year. He's now off to Texas A&M. Went from almost dead last to 97th in total defense. They'll, of course, lose Sam Williams and Chance Campbell, two players that are expected to be good, and I think they're even better than expected. Yeah, again, the transfer portal does wonders. They added seven transfers in all three levels here on this defense. Three starters as well. They'll be highly impactful. Kahari Coleman on the uh, front line. He's going to be the first one. Strong hands. One's on the interior. Good explosion. He was kind of a disappointment last year. What the hell was that? Sorry, that was, sorry, that was my dad. Hold on. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Kind of a disappointment last year. I think he was quite beat up, as was the entire TCU defense, though. They are all pretty disappointing. He had 15 tackles for loss and three sacks, though, as a freshman in 2020. J.J. Pegas, he comes over from Auburn. They also get Jared Ivey from Georgia Tech. You know, stopping the run is still a big issue, though, Nick. 4.5 yards per carry allowed, 25 touchdowns. They need more penetration. It's not a deep defensive line, and they were not that productive either. Only two defensive linemen ranked top 15 on the team in tackles. Tavares Robinson was the other one outside of Sam Williams. He should start at defensive end opposite side of Cedric Johnson, 6'3", 255-pounder. Very similar frame to that of Sam Williams. Eight and a half tackles for loss, six and a half sacks. He really got after it off the edge. What are your expectations for this defensive front that it's kind of, I'm kind of iffy on so far? I'm a little concerned as well. I like Jared Ivey coming over from Georgia Tech. I think he has some serious potential to be a strong player, a starter maybe on that left side. Tavarius Robinson, I like what he can do. Like you said, he had a decent year last year. He's looking to step up and be that sort of fill that hole that Sam Williams replaced. He was such a talented edge rusher that we had both pretty highly rated in our draft boards, top 10 player for that position in the class to be tough to replace that production. Robinson, though, last year, three and a half sacks, four and a half tackles for loss in nine games. I think he's going to be able to step up in the, in the defensive line. He's going to run through him. I like to see what he can do on defensive end. Now they replaced both starting linebackers, of course, Chance Campbell, one, Mark Robinson, the other. Both were reliable playmakers that helped improve this run defense. They're now gone. Reginald Hughes, though, second-ranked Juco linebacker. We'll see what he can do. Troy Brown, though, he was a star at Central Michigan. Used in a variety of different looks. You know, he can line up in the slot. He's great in coverage. 215 career tackles. Lost back in 2019. So he's done quite a bit of everything in his career. One of the nation's top linebackers, no doubt. Uh, you know, it feels like the run defense is kind of reliant on this linebacking core. We expect a regression, maybe staying the same or potentially even getting better. Yeah, I think it should take a step back a little bit. I do like that Cedric Johnson returns. He had six and a half sacks last year, second on the team. I like the bringing of Johnson. I think he has some serious potential. 
Uh, sorry. Let me reset it. I like the bringing in of Troy Brown. He has some serious potential, was a really great player at Central Michigan. The two of them that pair together, I think they will have a decent season. He had a monster season at Central Michigan, 66 tackles and a forced fumble that he recovered. I like to see what this linebacking core can do. I think they'll be a little bit less because they do lose their captain and Chance Campbell, who is a bit of a leader on for this team, especially in the linebacking group. But they should be roughly around the same for me. I like the talent they have, especially bringing in a guy like Brown. And Johnson has raw talent that he can definitely build on. I'm very excited for the secondary. You know, they took big strides this past season, 312 yards per game allowed through the air in 2020. They got that down to 230 in 2021. They get back three veterans in A.J. Finley, Otis Reese, Miles Battle. They're all back. They also add Ashim Young, who's an excellent center fielder there at Iowa State in that 335. A bit of a change here. It's a 425 at Ole Miss, but his role is certainly not going to be affected one bit. Finley had three picks last year. Battle had seven pass breakups. He's been around since 2018. I don't know how many different head coaches that is, but that's a few. Uh, continued improvement seems to be a guarantee for the secondary. Of course, there's no real surefire stud outside of Young, but these guys, they've all played together quite a bit. And I expect this secondary to continue to get better this year. Very excited for this back end. Having senior leadership in Finley is very important for this starting safety group. I think he's going to be exciting to see. I like Battle as well. I think he has the potential to make some plays. I like the way that they've been around the program for a little bit. They're comfortable, and I think the secondary will be strong this year. And of course, we'll see what happens in the nickel role. And then DeAndre Price, I think he's a senior slot for the other cornerback role. So we'll see what happens, see what the second year. But I think that improvement seems imminent. Looking at the schedule preview and prediction, you know, I think this team could certainly win the West. The offense, they're going to challenge opponents on a weekly basis. You know, Dart mixed with Kiffin is very exciting. Getting Bam at home could be the deciding game in this division. Um, you know, the run defense, though, I'm not very concerned confident about it you know i love a lot of the transfers they added on both sides secondary i just talked about how much i love them but some of these matchups aren't great especially towards the back half of the schedule mainly in the trenches you look at the uko line bad matchup the lsu d line bad matchup a&m in the trenches on both sides of course a&m they got schooled last year so they'll look for redemption bama though they've grinded down on that defense the last two years the offense was puzzled last year they couldn't get anything going arkansas to win in a shootout you know, I think that's what will happen there, kind of like last year. I think they've done it a couple years now. We just exchange points. And, you know, I like three of the, you know, like three of those are on the road in the lone home games against Alabama. Seven and five is my prediction, but a team like this is always tough to predict because, again, that offense has the capability to beat anyone. But it's a brutal stretch, Nick. How do you see Ole Miss's 2022 season playing out? A lot of those matchups in those four games from the 22nd to November 9th is just so poor. That defensive line matchup against LSU, like you said, just a very tough matchup for Ole Miss. They don't really match up at all. And when you look at that 14, you'd think, you know, maybe they win the game at home, but the game at home is against Alabama. That's going to be a tough game. You know, Alabama's going to come out this year and dominate. I like them potentially beat Arkansas on the road. That's going to be a shootout. You know, maybe they get maybe get the best of the Razorbacks. But 7-5, and 8-4 and four is right where this team kind of fits. Their non-conference isn't strong at all. They have a cakewalk there. They get Kentucky and the East. Should be an interesting matchup as well. But Kentucky's offensive line is so dominant. That's going to be tough for this, this weak defensive line to get through and put some pressure on Will Levis. Like I said, 7-5, 8-4, I think is right where this Ole Miss team belongs. Now, Ole Miss didn't play terrible on defense in some games last year. Against AM. they were phenomenal. LSU, pretty good. Baylor, they performed quite well, I'd say. Their offense, of course, had no pulse after Corral went down. I'd say they held their own. So the defense was not all bad, but obviously there's some bad matchups here that are tough to predict. I mean, they gave up almost 700 yards to Arkansas last year, 300-plus on the ground and in through the air. So obviously they have a lot of work to do. They also performed pretty well against Louisville also. So I think more consistency from the defense is certainly something we're looking forward to. But I think that, you know, the disadvantage in the trenches, that's certainly going to be a thing that continues to plague them. So we'll see what happens. Ole Miss should be a fun team to watch this year. Seven wins is the prediction, but it can go either way. Nick, as always, thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you so much. Should be a fun year for Ole Miss. That'll be it for today's episode, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe.